Ugh. Hi guys and hello cat lovers! Today I'm going to try and show you how to paint uh, a gear, uh, a heavy gear gear, actually. So here we have the um, the cat, the wild cat, pretty nice miniature and very modular, very poseable, and uh, you can you can graft the accessories you want, so you can accessorize it pretty much. Um, anyway. Uh, this is a wild cat. I think uh, I think that's one of those who who, who transform into a, a vehicle, or possibly not. Uh, Maybe a, a car, or, a, or not, not a car, a, a tank, or a motorbike, or a something. It certainly has wheels. Um, well, anyway, it, it's. Uh, well, it's, if it's a motorbike, I don't know. Or I don't know if it's a motorbike or not, or uh, or something else. I mean, you, you can't you can't hog every cat. Um, anyway, we're going to paint him in um, what's an appropriate color for a kitty? Kitty, kitty, kitty. Well, pink. I think yeah, pink, pink. That will do. All right. <coughs> Let's start with Murderous Magenta. It's a sufficiently virile name for a for a pink color. By the way, pink is just a color. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, it's not uh, until very recently it wasn't exactly associated with effeminacy anyway. So Murderous Magenta from P3 which is a nice magenta. It's, um, it's a red that's uh, neutral cold-ish, you know. And uh, we'll use, on this wet palette, I think we'll use Old Rose. It's a color from Balejo I like very much. It's a Balejo model color number 39. Uh, Rosa Antigo, old rose. Uh, reference 70944 or 039, I guess. Here, let's put it here. It's a nice uh, tea rose color. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll use that. And we'll use, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we'll use later on. You know. We'll start with some old rose. Pure old rose, although it's, of course, dilute. I'm using a number one brush from Raphael, but I guess you could use something thicker, really. I'm just used to using finer brushes than, than necessary. It, it means that if I get a little sloppy, it doesn't matter as much.
this is just a, a base color so I'm not too concerned for now at least about the uniformity of it as we'll do several layers one or two layers at the very least for this tutorial let's be careful I have to paint in all the little recesses and there are great many recesses in, on that miniature you know I realized that pink is a color we haven't really done yet in these tutorials <laughs> it's a uh, it's a pretty common color really I don't know why people are sometimes a bit hung up on pink this is pretty straightforward and dare I say it slightly boring it's just a base coat really a little too much paint on my brush never mind it'll be fine I hope you appreciate the little the, the pose I I give this gear it's a bit it's as if it's sauntering really it's a bit on um, it's on it's on the wheels has wheels on his feet. It's very dynamic. These um, these miniatures have a, a very odd scale to them. They're uh, twelve millimeter in uh, in scale. Twelve millimeter to the eye. That means a soldier. Of, uh, of these armies or these forces a human soldier is uh, 12 millimeter to the eye I think it's pretty much unheard of as a, as a scale although there are a great deal many scales out there well anyway the the 15 millimeter terrain does work with uh, with heavy gear according to the to the uh, game designers themselves i mean it's not uh, they, they they don't mind uh, unofficial stuff especially for terrain i mean Heavy Gear already featured a pink gear on their website, or was it in their uh, catalog or rule book? It was a girl's uh, gear, but uh, you know, it doesn't have to be. It, it doesn't have to be, I mean, look at rugby clubs some of those are have uh, pink colored um, jerseys and uh, and they're men <laughs> can't argue with that some people say real men wear pink because they don't fear being associated with a so-called girly color, which really isn't, but, you know. I say, don't fear a color. That's really not something to be afraid of. But that's just my little rant, really. It's 
just that I don't uh, I don't see pink very often in miniatures besides on uh, on flesh and it's a shame maybe that's because pink is also a traditional color of chaos for all those Warhammer aficionados out there well be that as it may I don't see it every day All right. <laughs> I think next we'll go for a little blue. It'll be wolf gray. Wolf gray from Army Painter. We haven't used the murderous magenta yet, but we will, don't worry. The army painter paints are a little, little more liquid, but they're fine anyway. <coughs> so, we'll paint these in that blue hue. Trying not to hurt our base coat. I don't know what these are. Chimneys? Exhaust pipes? Um, generators? Shields? reactors. One thing is for certain, they actually, I, I checked the, the pictures and, and they actually go in that direction, so they're not, um, they don't go down, you know, you know? it's, uh, I find it perhaps a little strange, but okay, if it goes up, it goes up. I'll do the gun as well. What a large gun. It's lovely. People seem to like that sort of thing. And yes, it's, it's reasonably nice. That blue hue will actually be the base of something white. Yes, it will. I think I'll paint those little cans here. Little grenades, perhaps. From that grenade launcher or something here. And those little chargers. Thank you.